My Fusion System, Fusing a Thousand Chickens at the Start Chapter 121, The Demonis Church's Secret The Mage Guild President is your leader, who else is going to the Mage Guild? The Astrologer Oh, right. The Astrologer Who is the Astrologer? Watson sat in the hall as he questioned Envy, who was kneeling in front of him. It had been an afternoon since they left the hill where the Demonis Bandit Gang was located. Watson had already returned to Black Moon Castle with a large group of men. At the same time, he sent the manor owners back to their respective residences to comfort them. As soon as he returned to the castle, he ordered the guards to rest while he stayed in the hall to interrogate the Demonis Bandit Gang leaders he had just brought back. He chose to separate the Demonis Bandit Gang leaders and interrogate them individually. That way, he could prevent them from colluding with each other. If there was anything that did not match during the interrogation, then someone must have lied. After he returned, he took off the six-in-one Great Sin mask and placed it in his spatial bag. The mask was as thin as a cicada's wing. Even if he had no direct contact with it and it was obstructed by space, it still affected his emotions that was the power of platinum tier equipment. Even though the side effects were powerful, the results were not weak either. Overall, Watson was still delighted. Envy was respectful when Watson questioned her. She lowered his head and said, Young Master Watson, do you really not know the astrologer? The astrologer, Antonio, was also known as the sage by the people in the kingdom. They said that he had existed since the establishment of the Holy Dragon Kingdom. He had helped the late king to conquer a large territory and witnessed the growth of the royal family's descendants. Some people said that he had mastered the art of immortality. Many powerful mages in the kingdom were his disciples, and he had created hundreds of spells. Antonio was also the idol of all the mages in the kingdom. Even if Envy was not a mage, she had heard of that person. She did not expect that Watson, a gold-tier mage and a master of some kind of powerful magic, did not know anything about Antonio. Perhaps the border count had not told him because he was an illegitimate son? Envy was still confused when Watson asked, Forget it, let's not talk about that astrologer for now. Tell me your leader is Pride, and she is also the Mage Guild president. What is going on? No matter how powerful the astrologer was, he was only a platinum tier elite. Even if he had heard about Folson and wanted to take revenge for the mage guild, Watson was not afraid as he had the Great Sin mask. However, he still had his family and friends in Black Moon Castle. He had to increase his strength quickly to protect himself, though that was not the most urgent matter at hand. The most important issue at that moment was pride. The most urgent matter at the moment was still pride. Watson did not expect that his extermination of the bandit gangs and the killing of Folson had actually amounted to the same thing. After he had killed Pride's subordinates two times over, so he knew that the Mage Guild president, Audrey, would not let him off that easily. It gave him a headache. He had thought that after he was a gold-tier elite, he would become the overlord at the border. As long as he did not provoke the border count, he would be able to do whatever he wanted. Then, he realized that the world was quite tiny. There were so many low-profile elites in a small place like the border. Young Master Watson, if you want to know about that, then we'd have to start with the origins of the Demonis Bandit Gang. Envy cleared her throat. Young Master Watson, do you know that the Demonis Bandit Gang's predecessor was the Demonis Church? which was once the kingdom's official religion. Then, for some reason, the king ordered its destruction. I know. The reason the Demonis Church was exterminated was because of the former Queen Lady Avril. Lady Avril was the border count's sister. She had half-elf blood and was the most beautiful woman in the kingdom at that time. The king loved her dearly, and he swore that he would only marry one woman for the rest of his life. Unfortunately, some bad things happened later. Envy looked melancholic, she seemed a little angry when she said that. The ministers reported that Lady Avril studied evil magic. They said that she used humans for sacrifices, and they found many animal and human corpses in her room. 
Watson nodded. Even though Avril was beautiful, she had a vicious heart, so the king endured the pain and killed her. His father, Edward, had told him some of those things during dinner, but he had not explained them in detail. Nonsense! Envy shouted, she even frightened Watson. When she realized that she had lost her composure, Envy quickly put on a straight face and took a deep breath to calm down. I'm sorry, young Master Watson, I didn't mean to be disrespectful to you. Lady Avril is truly a kind person. I can guarantee that she has never done all those things. Those who said that she was evil were either jealous of her or wanted to frame her on purpose. You seemed very familiar with Queen Avril. That's right, my real name is Denise. I am Lady Avril's personal maid, well, I used to be, Envy said. The scales on her face that symbolized the Fire Elves glowed with excitement. Avril was born in the beautiful Elven Kingdom the Forest of Eternity. The Moon Elves, the most powerful race there, were the Pearl of all Elves. As the Fire Elves were born with stronger combat abilities, they had been the Moon Elves' guardians for generations. Denise and Avril had been good friends since they were young. That's why I'm different from the other Demonis Bandit gang leaders. Rebuilding the Great Sin Mask and restoring the glory of the primordial Demonis are just empty words to them. I think they're only trying to get the mask to increase their strength. They're grateful for the small benefits promised by the king, so they set up a bandit gang to help monitor the border. They're the king's lapdogs. I usually cover myself with a cloak, I can't be bothered to talk to them. When she mentioned her companions, Envy was quite scornful. The king? Promise. Watson had so many questions. He felt as if his brain was not big enough. Was the king not the one who ordered his men to destroy the Demonis Church? Why did Envy make it sound as if the king had saved them? Young Master Watson, you did not know about that either. Envy was also a little surprised. As the Border Count's son, how did Watson not know anything? That was the basis of the hatred between the border count and the king. Perhaps Watson was too young, so the border count did not tell him. Envy decided not to think about that. She said, Hmm. You can't trust a man's words, especially someone with so much power. The king had said that he would only marry Lady Avril for the rest of his life. Now, he has another woman. He might think that he saved us from the Demonis Church to repay the debt he owed to Lady Avril. But how can he make up for it when she's already dead? Oh my god! Watson did not expect that he would be involved in the enmity between the King and the Border Count because he had annihilated a bandit gang. Goodness! I thought I'd cling to the Border Count's legs, but I think I need to reconsider that. Perhaps the King would observe his every move. If he were to take on the Holy Dragon Kingdom at that point, it would be no different than a mantis trying to stop a chariot. Continue. Watson scratched his head. He still had many things that he did not understand. For example, how could Envy, as the Queen's Guard, only be at the Silver Tier? Why was Avril framed? Why was Envy so respectful to him? Then I'll continue. Envy did not stand on ceremony. She thought that Watson was the Border Count's illegitimate son, he would know about those things eventually. What else was there to hide? Chapter 122, The Most Outstanding Child I can't believe the Demonis Church had such a background. I wonder if Watson's destruction of the Demonis Bandit Gang is a good thing or a bad thing. Zeke and Zenoa were leaning against the door outside the room as they eavesdropped on Watson and Envy's conversation. Zeke was the one who said that, and he looked worried. After he spoke, Zenoa immediately replied, What's done is done, there's no point in worrying about it. Anyway, Watson provoked them because of us. If the bandits had not robbed them, Watson would not have wanted to kill all of them, and he would not have been involved in such a thing. You do admit that it's because of you too. They heard a dignified voice. Zeke and Zenoa turned around and saw their eldest brother, Vincent, behind them. He stared at them with a serious expression. Eldest brother, why are you here? Ouch, 
it hurts. Without giving them a chance to speak, Vincent grabbed and twisted their ears. Even though Watson is much smarter than his peers, he's still a child. I don't feel at ease letting him do the interrogation by himself, so I came to take a look. You two are no help at all. Since you have time to eavesdrop, why don't you calculate the losses from the first battle? Although we had no casualties, the knights were still injured, and several hundred silver tier two winged ligers were also lost. Eldest brother, we know we're to blame. Zeke and Zeke could only nod in agreement to Vincent's words. They turned around and left helplessly. After watching the two of them leave, Vincent looked around and found no one nearby. He leaned on the door and pressed his ear against it. He had reprimanded his two younger brothers, but he also wanted to hear what Watson had to say to Envy. Those secrets were vital. Otherwise, Watson would not have interrogated her alone. The more he knew, the more dangerous it would be for him. However, no one could control their curiosity. Faint sounds came from the room. Vincent only heard snippets of their conversation about how the king had supported the Demonis Bandit gang, how they monitored the border, and how a member of the Demonis Bandit gang was the guild president. After he listened to that for a while, he stood up and tidied himself. Cough, cough. Then, he realized that his father was walking toward him as he coughed. He asked him calmly, Did you drink too much water during lunch? Why did you suddenly want to go to the toilet? Vincent, why are you here? Also, what were you doing at the door just now? That door is dirty. I'm just wiping it. Vincent endured the awkwardness and wiped his fingers on the door. Then, finally, he put it to his mouth and pretended to blow it. I don't know how the maids do things. That door is so dirty, and no one is cleaning it. It seems like we have to be more diligent in recruiting people in the future. Master Vincent, Master Edward, is there a problem with the cleanliness? Capella, the omnipotent maid that Watson had fused, came out from some unknown place as if she had heard the call. She put both hands against her abdomen and said with an elegant expression, Is there a problem? Please let me know, my lords. Vincent was at a loss. How would he know what the problem was? He only wanted to eavesdrop on Watson's conversation, but his father had caught him in the act. He thought of a random excuse out of embarrassment. In short, that door is filthy. I understand, young master Vincent. One of the maids cleaned it, but I'll ask her to come over and punish her severely to help you vent your anger. Capella nodded in understanding and waved her hand. A maid came out from the corridor nearby with a basin of water in her hand. A towel was soaked in the water. The maid was dressed in a black and white uniform with a beautiful garland on her head. She did not have any makeup on her face, her slender beauty and exquisite facial features matched her perfectly. One look and one could tell that she was a beautiful woman. After the maid reached them, her gaze lingered on Vincent's face for a few seconds before she lowered her head with a conflicted expression. Head housemaid Capella, how may I help you? Did you clean that door? The maid answered honestly, yes, I did. Young Master Vincent feels that that door is still filthy, why don't you clean it again? No, do it ten more times. As a maid, it's our job to serve our master. If our master is displeased, it means that we have failed at our duty. If you can't satisfy young Master Vincent after ten times, then you can leave Black Moon Castle on your own accord. Capella sounded firm. She was the manor's head housemaid, Watson gave her the right to reprimand or change her maids. Head housemaid Capella, please give me another chance, I the maid knelt on the ground and begged bitterly. Then, a hand reached toward her and pulled her up gently. Monica? You're Miss Monica, right? Capella, I know her. Let's forget what happened just now. Vincent looked at the maid in front of him with an indescribable expression, she was none other than Master Wilbur's daughter. Ever since they seized Wilbur List Manor, the people from that manor had moved to Black Moon Castle as subordinates, and Monica was one of them. When she first became a maid, 
Monica complained about things like how she was from a noble family, and she should not serve anyone else, how someone should serve her, or how she would kill everyone. Capella had beaten her for two days before her tears stopped. After that, she became much more restrained. At that moment, Monica suddenly thought of her father's death. Anger surfaced in her eyes, followed by deep sorrow it changed several times. She gritted her teeth and pushed Vincent's hand away before she turned around and ran away. Young Master Vincent, how dare she be so disrespectful to you? I will bring her back now. Capella's gaze turned cold. No need. Let her go. Vincent smiled bitterly. He had wanted to marry Monica because of the benefits for his family. So even though he had no feelings for her, he could not say that he did not have any feelings at all. Plus, Monica's father had died because of Black Moon Castle. So he had some sympathy for her. Furthermore, he felt that Monica had changed. She was not as unruly as she used to be. She gave him a different feeling then. Should he ask Watson for Monica to be his personal maid? He could also tell his father about that. With that thought in mind, Vincent turned around and suddenly felt a little lost. His father, who had said that he was going to the toilet, had disappeared without a trace. At the stairs on the second floor of the mansion. Edward patted his chest. You scared me to death. I almost got caught eavesdropping on Watson's conversation. Fortunately, Vincent only found Zeke and Zeke, and not me. How old are you? Why are you still doing such a childish thing? If you are worried about Watson, why don't you just go in there and listen? Catherine wore a light muslin dress. She leaned against the corridor wall of the corridor, her posture showed her beautiful figure. Catherine, so you are here too. Edward was stunned at first, then he scratched his cheek and revealed a shy expression. I don't want to give Watson any pressure. He brought the Demonis Bandit gang home and deliberately sent the guards away because he knew that things were not that simple. If he were to tell us about it, it might cause us to panic. I've decided to be a father who watches from afar, so. You mean you're lazy? What excuse do you have? Catherine rolled her eyes as if she had thought of something. Edward, that matter has something to do with you too. The reason you were expelled by the Saint Laurent family back then was that they had followed His Majesty's order and asked you to. Catherine. Before his wife could finish her sentence, Edward interrupted her with a solemn expression. That matter has already passed. I hope you won't bring it up again. Don't you intend to tell Watson about that? There's no need because Edward glanced down the stairs. The corners of his mouth rose, and his eyes were filled with satisfaction. Even if I don't say anything, that child will do everything well, to the extent that it is beyond my expectations. I have to admit that he is the most outstanding of all my children, and he is also my pride. Catherine, who stood at the side, revealed the same smile and corrected him. No, he is our pride. Chapter 123 How to Stay in the Storeroom Watson walked out of the hall with a headache. He looked at the sky outside and realized that it was already evening. He had spent the entire afternoon interrogating the Demonis Bandit gang leaders. Most of the time, he asked about the grudges between the king and the border count. The Demonis Bandit gang leaders all gave similar accounts, and Watson managed to get the whole story as he stitched their stories together. It seemed like some people who believed in the evil god the primordial Demonis had founded the Demonis Church a few years ago. That was probably how the story started. The primordial Demonis believed that humans were born with a combination of desires. It was instinctive to indulge in desires, but indulgence would lead to destruction. Therefore, humans should balance their desires and achieve pleasure without getting lost. That was the Demonis Church's original creed, which many people accepted. The Church also had the complete version of the Platinum Tear Great Sin Mask, which could absorb emotions. For example, if a person was too obsessed with money, and if he wanted to reduce it, he could transfer his greed to a part of the Great Sin Mask, which led to the rise of the Demonis Church. 
Unfortunately, as time passed, the Great Sin Mask could not bear the burden of absorbing too many negative emotions, and those emotions drifted out. The first person to be affected was the saintess who had kept the mask in the Demonist Church Queen Avril. Due to the mask's influence, Avril had transformed from a beautiful and kind empress who loved her people to a dark-hearted woman who abused her subordinates and animals, some would even call her crazy. That was why the king had executed her discreetly. Phew! Watson sighed as he stretched his lazy waist. His tender body expanded outward. He also removed the spatial package that he always carried with him. He wanted to put it in a room, he did not want to get too close to the Great Sin Mask. He knew what it was like when one could not control their emotions when they used the Great Sin Mask. However, those were what the Demonis Bandit gang leaders told him. He did not wholly believe them because he felt that there was something strange with the story. For example, the king had already killed Queen Avril. Why did he let the Demonis church members disguise themselves as members of a bandit gang? He even arranged for their leader to be the mage guild president and monitor the border count? After all, Queen Avril had been influenced by the Great Sin Mask. She did not plan to become like that. Was the king really a person who only cared about profit? Was he cold-blooded and heartless? There was another strange thing. Envy mentioned that she was Queen Avril's guard, she was a gold-tier warrior, only one step away from being a platinum-tier elite. However, before Queen Avril's accident, the king had ordered her to duel with a young and genius gold-tier warrior from the Saint Laurent family. She had been severely injured, and her level was reduced by one rank. Her opponent had held back, and he had been severely punished for that. He eventually disappeared. Why did the king have to find someone to duel with her before the queen's accident? By the way, was that young genius my father? I remember he used to be a member of the Saint Laurent family. When he was young, he was a gold-tier warrior too. Watson rubbed his chin as he thought about that. Then, he smiled and dispelled that thought. How was that possible? His father only knew how to make babies with his mother, Catherine. He was an idiot who did not know how to manage or farm, Watson found it difficult to associate him with the word genius. Young Master Watson, the interrogation has ended. Your most loyal and capable captain, Alan, has been waiting for you for a long time. He wants to what to do with the Demonis Bandit gang members next. As Watson was deep in his thoughts, he suddenly heard a voice. He turned around and saw Alan standing nearby. He asked, How are the men we brought back from the Misty Forest? With your help, young Master Watson, none of our knights have died. They were only slightly injured. I believe that they will recover in two or three days. Very good. They have worked really hard. Reward each of them with three Rainbow Phoenix chicken eggs daily to help them recover. Sven, the shabby bandit gang leader, came back with us as well, and he wants to join Black Moon Castle. I will let him continue to act as a bandit and observe for a period to see if he is sincere in joining us. Watson had already made plans for Sven. He wanted to form a bandit gang after the winter to learn more about the other bandit gangs from other sections of the border. Black Moon Castle was in constant expansion and would one day occupy the entire border. He would use it as a foundation for the future. Furthermore, if he had a bandit gang, then he could do some of the things that were inconvenient in the past. For example, he could rob the business alliances unwilling to join his organization or the owner manners who had objections against him. He could do that in the name of the bandit gang. Alan, have you calculated the gains and losses from that trip? Young Master Watson, I've just calculated it with the help of the young masters Zeke and Zenoa. We've lost 400 Silvertier two-winged ligers and 10 sets of Silvertier Gale Force armor, Alan explained respectfully. The reason the Black Moon Knights did not suffer from the petrification spell was the armor they wore, it had saved their lives. As for the gains, we have obtained the Demonis Bandit Gang's assets, and that included a small number of bronze-tier equipment and a large number of iron-tier equipment. The total value of that is about hundreds of thousands of gold coins, 
and we have also captured nearly 500 Demonis Bandit gang members. Apart from that, we also have a herd of fused magical beasts, more than 1,000 silver tier magical beasts, and 4,000 bronze tier magic beasts left. I have brought them back. Overall, we have made a profit. I understand, Alan. Take the Demonis Bandit gang leaders to the hall. From now on, they will be our slaves until our losses are completely compensated. They will work here. Alan nodded. Yes, young Master Watson. The loss of hundreds of Silvertier magical beasts is worth at least 100,000 gold coins. Even if we give them 10 gold coins a month, they will never be able to pay it off in their lifetime. This is where you will live. Go in. Take a bath and rest. From tomorrow onward, I will teach you how to be a qualified maid. If you don't do well, I will not be so polite about it. Capella led the six Demonis Bandit gang leaders to a few spacious bedrooms. After she gave them a few instructions, she turned around and left. Are we really going to live here? The youngest girl looked around the room and asked helplessly. This is all because of envy. If she hadn't betrayed us, we could have escaped even if we were no match for that brat. She looked dissatisfied, and her thin lips pursed tightly. Envy glanced at her, but she could not be bothered to say anything. She opened the door to a room and walked into it, the room had a gorgeous interior style. All right, it's too late to say that now. At least Watson is still quite nice to us. Greed rubbed her fingers habitually and tried to smooth things over. She took the room next to Envy, it had the same space and design. He had arranged such good rooms for us. He did not say it, but he is treating us like distinguished guests. After all, we still have to find out how he fused the grates and masks, and we need to get it back. I think we can stay here for the time being. Even the one who had been the angriest did not have anything to say when they saw the room. The spacious room included a bedroom, a living room, and a place to bath, and the sofa was made of genuine leather. They had been bandits for so long, but they had never stayed in such a high-class room. Suddenly, the door to the opposite room opened. Sven walked out of the room with a basket of colorful eggs in his hands. His left hand held a set of silver armor. Sven was stunned when he saw the Demonis bandits. Then, he walked toward their room with a strange expression, I did not expect to see you guys as soon as I opened the door. I'm sorry for laughing, but why are you standing in front of the storeroom? Storeroom? Sven called the place where they lived a storeroom? The Demonis bandit gang leaders looked at each other. Their expressions changed as if a big question mark had appeared on their forehead. Chapter 124, A Maid's Examination Sven, even if we are adversaries and leaders of a bandit gang, you would not mock us the moment we meet, right? Wrath snorted unhappily. Her thick eyebrows were raised. She had a well-defined face, a high nose bridge, long and narrow eyes, and short black hair. Her overall appearance looked average. I've never seen a storeroom with such exquisite furniture and murals, or is something worth more than ten gold coins just trash in the eyes of its owner, the golden-haired greed said with a mocking tone. She had taken care of the Demonis Bandit gang's finances, so she was quite proficient in business. It meant that she had an accurate judgment of how much those things had cost. You have misunderstood, I don't mean to mock you. I'm telling the truth. The place you are living in now is the castle's storage room. Sven raised his chin and nodded behind him. If you don't believe me, you can take a look at my room. Then you will understand. The Demonis bandit gang leaders looked at each other doubtfully when they realized that Sven had looked sincere. Did he tell the truth? I'll go take a look. The young girl did not hesitate. She walked behind Sven and looked into the room. She was stunned after only one look. She opened her mouth to speak, but she could not find the words. Lust, why aren't you talking? What did you see? Wrath came up behind Lust, and when she saw the room, she was also speechless. 
It was a luxurious room that was three times bigger than their room. It had three smaller rooms and two halls, there were bookshelves and wine storage cabinets in one of the halls. It had many expensive books and drinks, there was even a large French window and a balcony that overlooked a small courtyard with flowers and a pool. The pool sparkled under the sunlight. It was winter, so a thin layer of ice had formed on the pool. If it were summer, it would be great to swim in it. The Demonis bandit gang leaders saw two maids who were tidying Sven's room. Why do you have such a big room? The young girl was the first to snap back to her senses, she sounded so envious. They were not bothered about the luxury, but they did not like the inequality. If she had not seen Sven's room, she would have been satisfied with their assigned room. So, she felt terrible about it. Sven's room had a pool, no woman could resist a private pool. Now, do you think I'm lying? Sven chuckled and continued to say, My room is actually pretty common in Black Moon Castle. The Black Moon Knights have better rooms. Your room is already a few hundred square meters that's huge. Are you sure there are bigger rooms in the castle? Greed frowned, she was baffled. Black Moon Castle was massive it covered a few kilometers in radius. However, the actual building was a four-story structure. If every room were that big, then there would not be that many rooms. Don't misunderstand. There are not many rooms in Black Moon Castle that are bigger than this. But who said that the Black Moon Knights live here? Sven revealed a profound expression. As the guards of the castle, if they do not live here, where would they live? Sloth, who had not spoken at all, asked. Her snow-white eyelashes fluttered slightly. You should have seen those manors outside of Black Moon Castle on your way to the castle. The guards live in those manors. Other than Black Moon Castle, there were also more than ten manors in Black Moon Town. When Sven first came, he thought those manors belonged to other manor owners. Later, he found out that the knights were in the castle grounds during the day for training, and they would leave to their home in one of those manors at night. He had also asked the knights' captain, Alan. According to Alan, the three best manors were the ones Watson gave to him, List, and William after their battle with the manor owners' allied forces. The other guards had to buy those manors with their own money if they wanted to live there. The Black Moon Knights had a fixed monthly salary of at least 10 gold coins. They would also get three Rainbow Phoenix chicken eggs every day, and each of those eggs can be sold for 10 gold coins. Altogether, they could earn a few hundred gold coins in a month. It meant that a few of them could share a manor. Some guards even pay for maid services from Black Moon Castle. Sven was shocked when he found out about that. The guards were also servants in a castle. Everyone would think of them as lowly and without any right to complain. He had never heard of guards with servants of their own. Was that for real? The Demonis bandit gang leader's lips twitched as they fell into shock. That sounded too good. It was no wonder that Sven said that they lived in a storeroom. It seemed like their living conditions were quite terrible when compared to the guards in their own manners. Oh, right. Besides the rooms, each of them also gets a rainbow phoenix chicken egg daily, a monthly salary, and a set of silver tier armor. Do you get any of that? Sven thought for a moment and said, Also, I just remembered that those who join Black Moon Castle could also get a silver tier mount. Well, I'm on my way to look for young Master Watson to get my mount. As for you. Stop talking. Wrath was furious, she gritted her teeth. She finally understood that Sven was there to show off to them. The Rainbow Phoenix Chicken was a legendary gold-tier magical beast. She had only heard of it, she had never seen it before. As for the Silver-Tier armor, only the Demonis Bandit gang leader had the right to use the Silver-Tier equipment the Broken Great Sin Mask. As one of the three great bandit gangs at the border, the Demonis Bandit gang had many assets in addition to their heritage in the past. However, other than the magical array used to summon the primordial Demonis, they were nothing compared to Black Moon Castle. I'll take my leave. Have a good rest in the utility room. Sven laughed and turned around to leave. 
It had been a long time since he felt so comfortable, his former rivals had been defeated in front of him. Initially, he had wanted to join Black Moon Castle because he had no choice. However, he decided that he really did want to join them, even if he only served as a small guard. He had more resources in his hands than in the past. After they watched Sven leave, Rath looked at their assigned room, she did not feel good about it. They have underestimated us. It seems like before we could explore Watson's secret in fusing the Great Sin Mask, we must first raise our status here. At the very least, we must get a Rainbow Phoenix chicken egg to taste, the young girl wiped her mouth with desire. She did not crave the Rainbow Phoenix chicken egg, she had a reason for that. It looked like she was not even comparable to a guard. Her status was too low, she would not be able to get any information about anything. What did that woman, Capella, say just now? She wants us to be maids here. Let us perform well so that they will see how outstanding we are. At that moment, the Demonis Bandit gang leaders clenched their fists and made up their minds. They were silver tier elites, it would be easy for them to be maids or clean rooms. Chapter 125 Go and get young Master Watson. The day passed quickly. The next morning, the Demonis Bandit gang leaders woke up early and stood outside the mansion, they were ready to welcome Capella's test. Let me introduce you. That young lady is Wendy. She is the second most outstanding maid in the mansion after me. She is also the other head housemaid in the castle. If you have any questions, you can ask her. Capella pointed at a pretty girl with emerald green hair beside her. Wendy curled her lips in displeasure and corrected her. Sister Capella, why am I the second most outstanding maid? Is that what young Master Watson said? She and Capella were both head housemaids. Each of them was responsible for leading a group of maids. There was a monthly competition whomever's employee performed better would receive additional rewards. Wendy did not care about the rewards. She just wanted Watson to think highly of her. She had been the only head housemaid in the castle. When Watson decided to let Capella be the head housemaid, she had asked Watson if he was dissatisfied with her or if she had done something wrong. Watson told her that she had done well, but every position needed some competition. Competitiveness was the source of human progress. Just like the captain and vice-captain of the guards in Black Moon Castle if the vice-captain wanted to become the captain, then he had to become more outstanding. If the captain did not want to be replaced, then he had to work twice as hard. Even though Wendy did not quite understand what Watson meant, she still felt that the young man was very powerful. She did not know how Watson, who was about the same age as her, knew so much. Hello, Miss Wendy. After Capella finished her introduction, the five Demonis Bandit gang leaders nodded at her. Greed asked, Chief Capella, may I ask what we are going to do now? Her face was full of fighting spirit. She held an ancient gold coin in her right hand and rubbed it gently. She could not wait to show off her ability so that the people of Black Moon Castle could see her competence. I'll assign you a task. You, you, and you go and clean the branches and weeds in the courtyard. Remember, the courtyard is the front of a nobleman, which reflects the taste of the noble master. If he can't even manage his courtyard, then the guests won't be in the mood to enter the manor. Capella tapped on greed, envy, and lust and told them to take charge of the courtyard. As for wrath and sloth, she said, you two can stay behind and clean the rooms. A qualified noble must have not only a luxurious and elegant courtyard but also a spotless room, even if those rooms are not occupied. We understand. The Demonis Bandit gang leaders looked at each other. Then, they spread the combat aura wings on their backs and went straight to the place that Capella had directed. In a flower bed in the courtyard. This the place we need to trim. The young girl looked around her and realized that the flower bed stretched for several kilometers and surrounded the entire castle. Even though it was called a flower bed, it was planted with many valuable medicinal herbs. There was also a spacious wheat field outside the flower bed crystal-like wheat swayed in the wind in that field. 
it was almost ready for harvest. People dressed like farmers could be seen combing the wheat field. A few maids were also there, they held huge scissors as they tended to the medicinal herbs on the flower bed. The air was filled with the unique fragrance of plants its scent made people feel as if their combat aura was circulating at a faster speed. Cultivation in that courtyard was at least three times faster than cultivation in the outside world. Look at the variety of that wheat it seems to be bronze tier. I've heard that that color of wheat can only be found in the north. It's very rare in the kingdom. I did not expect they would have so many here. There are also those medicinal herbs in the garden. Bronze tier medicinal herbs such as the sunflower can increase one's strength and fire elemental combat aura's power, the silver tier moonlight demonic grass, and look over there. I think that's a gold tier 7 treasures glazed ginseng. Black Moon Castle is really rich. Lust sighed. If she had not experienced Sven's ridicule yesterday, her mental endurance would have been much stronger. Otherwise, she would have cried out in surprise and treated the room that she thought was gorgeous as a storeroom. It did not seem like it was difficult to understand why they cultivated the precious medicinal herbs. The flower beds in Black Moon Castle are divided into 12 regions. Each region cultivates different quality medicinal herbs. The quality of the medicinal herbs in Region 1 is the worst. You are now in Region 1. Even if you cut and destroy the medicinal herbs here, we won't lose much money. Capella's voice echoed from afar. So many precious medicinal herbs, but it was the worst grade? The Demonis Bandit gang leaders fell into silence, they were a little surprised again. How could a silver tier elite do such a stupid thing like destroying the medicinal herbs? Not only will I not destroy it, but I will also let them grow better. Greed walked to the flower bed closest to her and threw the coin in her hand onto it. She let the coin disappear and turned into a golden light that covered the crops, it made the medicinal herbs that were already growing strong grow even bigger. She was great at buffing her teammates, so it was not difficult for her to speed up the ripening process of the crops. Meanwhile, in the direction of Sloth and Wrath, Wendy was responsible for keeping an eye on them from the outside. Capella had already brought them to the castle hall. As she pointed at the hall that occupied hundreds of meters in front of them, Capella looked at the sky outside and said, You guys are in charge of that area. I'll only give you half an hour. I'll come and check on you in half an hour. It won't take half an hour. It'll be done in a few minutes. Anger snorted as her body suddenly grew from a meter to a three meter tall giant. She pressed her palm against the floor and waved it forward the dust on the ground was swept away by the strong wind and floated out of the window. Sloth also followed her movements and hovered in mid-air. Invisible combat aura arms stretched out from her back and her palms turned into the shape of a broom and a mop. She swept the walls and the ceiling and began to clean up. Most of their abilities came from the Great Sin Mask, but that did not mean they were useless without the mask. In fact, the Demonis Bandit Gang had a complete set of cultivation methods, which were copied from the Great Sin Mask. However, only the Demonis Bandit Gang leaders were qualified to cultivate it, and they could still use it even without the mask. Half an hour later, the people on both sides of the tasks finished the test and returned to Capella, their faces brimmed with confidence. They felt that they had done very well. The work that usually took a few hours for the maids to complete was completed in a few minutes, and they did it even better. Wendy, how do you think those people are doing? Capella's expression was calm. She did not announce the test results but turned around to ask Wendy, who had followed her into the room. I think Wendy hesitated and shook her head. They can't do it. As soon as her voice fell, the expressions of those Demonis Bandit gang leaders changed. They were about to ask why she said that when they heard Capella's cold snort. You guys are really the worst batch of maids that I've ever taught. Your name is Lust, right? I told you to trim the branches, but I did not tell you to seduce the servants in the manor. And you greed. Why did you go and ripen the medicinal herbs? The young master had carefully cultivated those herbs. The growth period for those herbs has already been calculated. If you ripen them recklessly, 
it will mess up young master's plans. Yes, your name may be Wrath. I told you to clean the room, but I did not tell you to ruin it. You left several big handprints on the expensive furniture in the room. If the floor were not hard enough, I think it would have collapsed under your feet. Finally, you, Sloth. Most people are like their names, and you're the same. You're really lazy. You've only been working for a while, and you're already sleeping on the floor. I'm a bit jealous that your performance is not that bad. In short, all of you are not qualified to be a maid. Before you learn what I taught you, no one is allowed to eat. What? Why do you blame me for my charm? The young girl refuted righteously and passionately. There are many servants here who take advantage of my working hours to strike up a conversation with me. What can I do? You really can't see a good deed. Greed said, it's very tiring for me to help with the ripening of the medicinal herbs. The quality of those medicinal herbs had been increasing by at least one or two levels. For the same medicinal herb that has gone from ordinary bronze tier to fine bronze tier, its value may be twice as high. Do you understand that? Our cleaning speed is a hundred times faster than the maids here. Why are you still not satisfied? Even if I were to break the furniture accidentally, you can't blame me for that. You can only blame the quality of the furniture in Black Moon Castle they're too inferior. Besides Envy, who had stayed silent, the other Demonis Bandit gang leaders presented their arguments loudly. They had worked very hard, so why could they not eat? Did Capella deliberately make things difficult for them because they were bandits? They could not tolerate that. Sister Capella, what do we do now? Wendy looked a little afraid when she saw how arrogant those women had looked. Capella was livid. She waved her hand and said, Go and get young Master Watson here. Chapter 126, Fusing the Nine-Colored Ginseng Watson sat on a bed in one of the bedrooms of Black Moon Castle. There was a spatial pouch on it, and the great sin mask was in his hand. It was as thin as a cicada's wing. If it doesn't have any side effects, I can carry it with me all the time. Should I try fusing the mask with other equipment to see if I can change its attributes? Watson thought. If he equipped the great sin mask, he could gain more than ten skills out of thin air. Who would not want to keep such good equipment with him? However, its effect on emotions was a little intense. For example, if he were only to touch the mask, his stomach would rumble non-stop. He felt hungry and wanted to eat everything in front of him. That feeling originated from the desire to overeat. Perhaps it was because he did not eat in the morning, but that desire was magnified infinitely. He had to find a suitable solution he had to become stronger to protect his family. Young Master Watson, are you there? At that moment, Wendy's familiar gentle voice echoed from outside the room. Watson looked up and put the mask down. Come in. Click. The door was pushed open with a crisp sound. Wendy walked into the room, put her hands on her abdomen, and bowed to him. Young Master Watson, Sister Capella told me to look for you. The female bandits you brought back had some problems during their training. What problems? Are they not listening to Capella's orders? A cold light flashed in Watson's tender eyes. At that moment, he suddenly felt intense anger in his heart. He wanted to punish those women severely, but he tried his best to suppress it. Sort of. Wendy nodded and then shook her head. Even though they have completed the task given to them, they have done unnecessary things on their own. Now, because of that, Sister Capella has quarreled with them. I see. Take me there, I'll go take a look. Watson nodded and put the great sin mask into the space pouch before he gestured for Wendy to lead the way. He did not think those bandits were good people anyway. They might not be able to control their desire to kill innocent people their hands were stained with blood. He had wanted to punish them when he brought them back. If they were, he would treat them as his subordinates. If they were not obedient, then he would fuse them. Just like what he had done to Capella. Tell me, 
what exactly did I do wrong when I accelerated the ripening of those medicinal herbs? If you did not do that to make things difficult for me, then can you give me a reason? Greed stood in front of Capella next to the flower bed outside Black Moon Castle. She pointed at the flourishing medicinal herbs in the garden as she spoke to Capella. Even though the women behind Greed did not say anything, they had the same expression on their faces. Obviously, they felt that there was nothing wrong with Greed's action. Capella deliberately made things difficult for them. I've already told you the reason just now. You've disrupted young master's plan, Capella said coldly. Disrupted the plan. Greed sneered at her in mocking. Shortening the growth period of a medicinal herb that can only mature in a year to half a year, and increasing the medicinal effects by several times, is that what you call disrupting the plan? I don't think a maid like you knows anything. The two of them argued loudly as many servants watched and whispered nearby. Who are those people? They're so arrogant to question head housemaid Capella. Young Master Watson appointed her to be the head, and she has been handling everything in the house in an orderly manner. I've never seen her make any mistakes. I heard that those new maids were members of the Demonis Bandit Gang. Bandits have bad tempers. However, head housemaid Capella has invited young Master Watson here. They're going get it soon. The crowd discussed animatedly. At that moment, Watson had already walked out of the manor behind Wendy. At a glance, he saw a few people in an argument. Watson forward and asked, What happened? Young Master Watson, I failed to teach those people. We can't keep them as maids. Please punish them, young master. Capella turned to face Watson and knelt on one knee respectfully. You are wrong, indeed, but it has nothing to do with us, it is your incompetence. Greed said as she hugged herself. Young master Watson, I have nothing to say. Take a look at the flower bed. I have clearly done a good deed, and that maid doesn't know anything, yet she dares to criticize me. You were the ones who knew nothing. Watson pulled Capella up, turned his head to glance at the flower bed, and his face darkened. Young Master Watson, it's not good to lie in front of so many people. Greed snorted coldly. Anyway, the matter had already been blown up, so she did not mind to blow it up a little more. Perhaps everyone could see how Watson was biased and did not know how to differentiate right from wrong. She wanted to see the other servants in the castle look down on him. Lady Greed, have you ever cultivated Silvertear medicinal herbs? Watson did not get angry. Instead, he asked her calmly. No, why? Even though the Demonis Bandit gang was rich, they were not rich enough to cultivate Silvertear medicinal herbs. Then, do you know the basic skills to cultivate medicinal herbs? If you have something to say, young master, just say it. There's no need to pretend with me, Greed replied impatiently. Then, Rath said, how does one plant the herbs? Put them in the soil and water and fertilize them at a fixed time every day. You're right. We do need to water and fertilize, but that's not enough. Every piece of land here has a fixed fertility rate. We'd lose the soil's fertility if we plant too many herbs on it. Similarly, you can't plant low-tier medicinal herbs near high-tier medicinal herbs. Otherwise, the high-tier medicinal herbs will absorb the effects of those low-tier medicinal herbs. Watson chuckled and pointed at the flower bed in front of him. For example, those herbs here. I calculated the distance for each herb to grow and the required nutrients, so I planted them here. If you do what you did, then that flower bed will be ruined. You can say as you wish but do you have proof that the flower bed is ruined? Greed looked dissatisfied. If you want proof, I'll give it to you. Watson nodded as he pointed at the few seven treasures glazed ginseng in the flower bed. System fusion, activate. Congratulations, Master, for successfully fusing with the gold tier herb seven treasures glazed ginseng. You have obtained a peaked gold tier nine treasures glazed ginseng. The original effect of the Gold Tier 7 Treasures Glazed Ginseng was that it could heal all injuries after consumption. Therefore, 
it was the most effective herb for elites below the gold tier. The stronger the user, the weaker the effect. Additional effect, after consumption, increases lifespan by 100 years. Gains 1000 caddies of strength. When consumed by a man, it increases his combat aura by half an hour in bed. Those two effects had been enhanced. Peaked Gold Tier Herb The Nine Treasures Glazed Ginseng Effect, after consumption, heals all injuries. Effective for those below Platinum Tier. Additional effect, after consumption, increases lifespan by 200 years. Increases strength by 3000 caddies. When consumed by a man, it increases his combat aura by one hour in bed. His attractiveness is also significantly increased. The seven treasures glazed ginseng in the flower bed had turned into a stream of light before it fused and turned into nine color ginseng. Its body size was much larger, it was a herb that was even more exquisite than fine handicrafts. Nine color ginseng. Greed widened her eyes. The legends said that the ginseng's color developed every 100 years. Thus, it was called the one color ginseng. The nine color ginseng was already close to a thousand years old it was definitely a top tier medicinal herb. Greed could use money to increase the crop's growth. However, it could only increase its age to another few years. Who would have thought that Watson could improve it by a few hundred years? Chapter 127, The Mage Guild's Attack That's right. That is the nine color ginseng, but that's not the point. Watson nodded affirmatively as he pointed at the flower bed. Look carefully. What has become of the medicinal herbs in the flower bed? Everyone looked in the direction he pointed and found that some of the medicinal herbs growing well in the flower bed had turned yellow. The leaves were drooping as if the nutrients had been sucked away. On the other hand, the nine-colored glazed ginseng looked dazzling with the light it emitted. See? That is why I said that it's not good to speed up the ripening of the crops, Watson said. As a modern man, he possessed agricultural knowledge that far surpassed that world. For example, he knew how to decrease the erosion of soil and water, control pests, and so on. The farming methods in that world were very crude. They were using the three-thirds system of land commonly used in the Middle Ages. Large plots of good land were used to grow crops, the bad ones were used for idle farming, and the rest of the land was used to develop animal husbandry. On the one hand, they could sell the farmed livestock for money, and on the other hand, they could use the beast's feces to restore fertility to the land. That was a very crude system. It did not have the science of modern agriculture processes at all, so the productivity in many parts of the kingdom was very low. Watson had the convenience of system fusion, and at the same time, he had a vision that transcended the times, which caused his words to leave the Demonis bandit gang leaders stunned. How did it become like that? Isn't the higher the level, the better? Greed could not understand it. A high-tier medicinal herb could actually absorb the nutrients of a low-tier crop. She felt that her worldview had been overturned. She would usually plant some crops when she was in the bandit gang because of her ability. She would watch them grow and reap the joy in her heart. However, she had never thought about that problem when she was planting the crops. She was not only shocked by the method that Watson had used. He knew that Watson had mysterious magic that could fuse with the Great Sin Mask, which they could not handle. She did not expect that Watson could also fuse with other things. It's very easy to fuse herbs. If I want to do it, I can turn all the herbs in the flower bed into gold tier herbs. But is that really necessary? Watson pretended to be deep in thoughts. Of course, it was necessary. It was not that he did not want to fuse all the herbs in the flower bed into gold tier, they did not have enough herbs. In addition, the guards would inevitably bump into each other during training, so they needed those herbs. If he were to fuse all the herbs into high tier goods, they would not have enough normal ones, and he would also be reluctant to let others use them. Any other questions? Greed remained silent. He convinced her. If Watson did not do anything and only used words to criticize her, she might not be satisfied. 
However, Watson had used facts to shatter her pride. Capella, tell me, any other problems? Watson turned his head and asked Capella. She said, there's also sloth and wrath. They shattered the furniture when they were cleaning the room. I spoke to them about it, but they refused to accept the punishment. All right, I admit that it's our fault for destroying the furniture, but our speed is at least a hundred times faster than the other maids. They can clean one room, but we cleaned one hundred rooms. From that point, we should be forgiven for what we did. Wrath did not speak so harshly when she saw what happened to Greed. However, she still insisted that she was right. It was inevitable that there would be mistakes in the pursuit of speed. One could never have the best of both worlds. Those are all excuses. Watson shook his head. Come with me. As he spoke, he led everyone into the manor and arrived in front of a specific bedroom. He raised his hand and spread the combat aura wings on his back. The color of the wings was cyan, which meant that he was using wind elemental combat aura. After a few seconds, he circled the bedroom at a breakneck speed. The whistling combat aura turned into a strong wind and rolled the furniture. Immediately after that, the combat aura wings on Watson's back changed from cyan to blue as thick vapor covered the furniture, the walls, and every crack in the room. After the water washed through the room, the combat aura on Watson's body changed again it turned into a dazzling golden color. The rich sunlight shone onto the room, it evaporated the water flow quickly. The room emitted the smell of the sun. Fresh, clean, and neat, and even the furniture reflected light. I only need less than a minute to clean the room, but look, did I damage the furniture? Watson clapped his hands and retracted the combat aura wings on his back. You. She opened her mouth in anger. She wanted to say that Watson had used three different types of combat aura in such a short period he was a monster. If she had the strength of such a monster, she could also clean the room in a minute without damaging the furniture. However, after she thought about it, she still did not say it out loud. She defended herself because she was stronger than the servants in the manor. Since Watson was stronger than her, he could also do things that she could not do. Don't think that because you are Silvertier warriors, you can belittle these trivial tasks. One would need specific skills to do them well. I think any of our housemates are better than you. Do you acknowledge that? Watson looked around him, and the Demonis bandit gang leaders fell silent. From now on, learn well from Capella. Don't let me hear such things again. Otherwise, Black Moon Castle will be kind enough to send you to hell. Watson's voice was loud and clear. The Demonis bandit gang leaders looked at each other and lowered their heads in fear. Just as Watson had said, they looked down on maids because they thought they were more powerful. It seemed like they had to reflect on themselves. Capella, I'll leave the rest to you. Watson gestured to Capella before he turned around to leave. Yes, young Master Watson. Capella looked at Watson with admiration and respect. It was just as what she had expected of a young master. If she could not handle someone, then he would take care of it immediately. However, she did not know that Watson had sighed discreetly. Fortunately, I have the fusion system and have mastered all the different elemental combat aura. Otherwise, I would not be able to subdue those people. After that incident, they would still be a little more obedient. Otherwise, Watson decided that he did not need to fuse them as human fusion was equivalent to killing them. He was not willing to do that unless he was truly angered. Suddenly, he heard shouts from the guards from outside the castle. Young Master Watson, something terrible has happened. We received news from a manor owner that Monty Town's Mage Guild has recruited mercenaries and formed an army. They want to destroy Black Moon Castle and demand an explanation for Elder Folson's death. Our spy could ride faster, so he was ahead of them. He reported that the Mage Guild would arrive in a day. Chapter 128, Strictly Enforced Words Lady Audrey, Black Moon Castle is just ahead. We've already arranged for everyone to rest according to your instructions. 
A bronze tier mage from the mage guild spoke respectfully to the woman in front of him. Very good. Audrey sat on a white horse, she played with her nails as she replied to him casually. They were at the outskirts of the misty forest it was also the only way to get to Black Moon Castle from Monty Town. Horse carriages were parked around the forest, and there were armored mercenaries and mages in the carriages. They were eating and talking to each other there were more than a hundred of them, and their bodies emitted a powerful aura. The mage guild had organized an army of elites, and all the participants were at least bronze tier. Fifty bronze tier warriors and mages, respectively, would be a destructive force if they were placed at the border. There were also a few silver and gold tier experts among those men, including Audrey and the Northwind mercenary group, Ron. The Northwind mercenary group was the largest mercenary group in Monty Town. The leader of the group, Ron, was a gold tier warrior nicknamed the Wolf of the Northwind. It was rumored that Ron is part of a demi human bloodline, the Polar Werewolves, which allowed him to transform into a ferocious magical wolf. He could tear other gold tier magical beasts apart with his bare hands. At that moment, that ferocious warrior stood beside Audrey. His unruly grey hair hung over his shoulders, and his rough face had a wide grin on it. His wolf ears swayed gently as he said, Audrey, I can't believe that you would spend so much money to eliminate a small and unknown faction at the border. We are the most famous mercenary group in Monty Town, it's not cheap to hire us. Have you thought carefully about it? We hired you to protect the mages when they cast their spells. We don't need you in a real battle. Audrey raised her head with a proud expression. Ron's gaze swept greedily over Audrey's voluptuous body in her robe. Then, finally, he asked, Oh, you look very confident. I heard that an elder from your guild died tragically in Black Moon Castle. All his belongings and the mages who went with him were all detained by Black Moon Castle. They managed to defeat a mage who has mastered a gold tier spell it proves that Black Moon Castle has at least the same level of combat strength. I've also heard that they are related to the border count. Are you sure it's okay to attack them? Ron, don't talk so much nonsense. Just focus on your matters. Audrey's expression turned cold. A pitch black aura spread along her body and swept across the ground nearby. A layer of black ice covered any grass or soil the black aura touched. Ron's pupils contracted. He activated his ability as a gold tier warrior to teleport and appeared more than ten steps away to avoid the black aura. Audrey, we've known each other for a long time. You don't have to be so ruthless to me, you know? It's only a joke. I know that the mage guild is hosting a hotshot from the capital. You're so confident because of that person? Right. Ron was a mercenary, so he was well informed. In fact, he already knew who that person was. He mentioned that to Audrey because he wanted her to introduce him. Who do you think this astrologer is? Do you think that you can meet so casually? Audrey's face was filled with disdain. At that moment. Audrey, you have to be courteous when talking to others. I don't have any other identity. I'm just an ordinary mage. They heard a voice that sounded old as a grey figure appeared in front of them. It was an ordinary looking old man. His body was slightly bent, and he wore plain grey clothes. The cuffs and collar of his clothes were worn, and they had been washed until they were white. There were patches in some places too. The old man held a half-moon shaped magic staff in his right hand, and the top of the staff was carved with the head of a giant dragon. The giant dragon's mouth had a huge sun gem, and it shone brightly. Lord Astrologer When they saw the newcomer, Audrey and Ron lowered their heads respectfully at the same time. The guards and mages around them also did the same thing. Their eyes were filled with admiration as they peeked at the man. The old man looked ordinary, but they knew that it was because his strength was too different from theirs, so they could not sense his aura. The old man could destroy the world easily with a single stretch of his hand. Lord Astrologer, you just arrived at the border yesterday. Why don't you rest in the carriage? Audrey sounded a little anxious. She was Monty Town's chief mage, a gold-tier elite, 
and former Demonist Church's pride. She had a natural sense of superiority toward everyone, but not the old man in front of her. If she were a roaring tiger or a shocking dragon when she was angry, then the old man in front of her was the sky and the sea. He could tolerate everything, and there was no comparison at all. Audrey, there's no need to be so nervous. It's not the first time we've met. I had already spoken to you a few times when you were in the Demonist Church. Besides, when I was in the Temple of the Stars, I was always alone. I am tired of small places. The carriage you prepared for me is very comfortable, but I am still not used to it. I wanted to come down and get some fresh air. The old man stretched and looked upward. Look at how beautiful nature is, the birds and flowers smell nice, and the air is fresh. But, of course, it would be even better if there's a little rain. Whoosh! As soon as he finished speaking, a few thick dark clouds floated from the sky. The rain was fragrant, and the raindrops pelted the trees and people. The faint clouds and mist reflected the surroundings, it made it look like a fairyland. Strictly enforced words. The warriors had special characteristics every time they reached a certain level, and it was the same with mages. Silvertier warriors' combat aura could transform into wings, and gold-tier warriors could teleport. The ability of silvertier mages was to cast spells quickly, which meant it could shorten the time to do that. Gold-tier mages could master instant cast spells, and they did not even have to chant low-level spells to cast them. As for a platinum-tier mage, their words are always strictly enforced. They did not need to cast a spell, they could control their surroundings with just a thought it was a spectacle. It was not a spell, but it was more powerful than ordinary spells. Ron and Audrey fell silent when they saw what had happened. They could feel the rain on their body, it made them stronger. The expressions of the people around them also became more respectful. That was the Platinum Mages the Kingdom's Mages. The old man stood in the rain and took a few deep breaths. Then, he turned his head and said, I've had enough rest. We can continue on our journey now. Yesterday, you told me about Black Moon Castle. They killed one of yours, and I can help you to get rid of them. But, you have to do me a favor. His main purpose at the border was to meet someone. When he was in the Temple of the Stars, he sensed that someone had created a new magical element at the border. He wanted to see who did that. When he had arrived at the Mage Guild in Monty Town the previous night, Audrey had begged him to help her destroy Black Moon Castle. He had not cared about that, but since he was in a good mood, he had decided to agree to her request. Really? Thank you so much, Lord Astrologer. Audrey could not hide her joy. She hesitated for a moment before she said, I just sent someone to scout for information. Please wait for a moment. We will set off when my men return. She did not send her scout to Black Moon Castle but the Demonis Bandit Gang. She thought that Black Moon Castle's destruction was imminent since she had the astrologer's help. She wanted her fellow Demonis Bandit gang members to take over Black Moon Castle once they were destroyed. She knew that her scout would be back soon. Then, a man dressed as a mage flew down from the sky on a whirlwind. He reached her with a strange expression. Then, he whispered something into her ear. After she heard those words, Audrey's face changed. She exclaimed in surprise. What did you say? The Demonis Bandit Gang is destroyed. Chapter 129, The Mysterious Platinum Tear Mage Half an hour later, Audrey stood at the edge of the misty forest, away from the five mountains where the Demonis Bandit Gang's lair had located. She stared at the collapsed peaks it did not have the slightest hint of life. Her expression was blank. What happened? How did it become like that? The Demonis Bandit Gang was still there when she went back a few days ago. How could the Demonis Bandit Gang be annihilated in just a few days when she went to the Mage Guild to deal with some matters? The magical array that they had prepared for more than ten years a primordial Demonis projection that could summon the strength of a Platinum Tier Elite. Other than the Border Count, who else had the strength to defeat the primordial Demonis projection? 
Did the border count finally have enough of that bandit, so he took action on them? Audrey, it seems like you've done quite a lot in the past few years at the border. The astrologer stood beside Audrey and looked at her meaningfully. Even though the mountain peak was filled with cracks and more than half of the sturdy iron chains were broken, the primordial demoness original head could still be seen on it. As the oldest and most knowledgeable mage in the kingdom, the astrologer recognized what the primordial demoness needed to summon the magical array. Furthermore, the magical array had been activated. I sensed the aura of a platinum tear spell here. The astrologer sniffed and looked in a direction. It was a pitch black frozen pool located below the five mountains. The black surface bubbled. There was no vegetation on either side of the cold pool. The pool was hundreds of meters in circumference, and it emitted the aura of death. No matter how many years passed, it would still not change. That does not smell like Sylvan's work. It seems to be some kind of ancient magic that I am familiar with, did Sylvan research that? Perhaps there was another mage with him? If Sylvan did not do that, then it must have been the person that he was looking for. That person must be very powerful to be able to create new magic elements that were not available in the world. It was something he had expected from a platinum tier mage. He had a very simple idea. He would find that mage and get information about the new magical element from him. At the same time, he could also rope the man into joining the kingdom. If the man were to refuse him, then he would have to kill him. He could not allow the new magic to flow to another country. Lord Astrologer, I did not do anything. Audrey was terrified when she heard the older man's words. She knew that he was a pacifist. She had killed many people to revive the Demonis Church over the years. If she angered him, then she would die at least a hundred times. Forget it, Audrey. You're here because of His Majesty's arrangements. Since His Majesty hasn't said anything about what you've done, then I won't say anything. The astrologer waved his hand. I can use magic to reverse time and see who destroyed that place. Thank you, Lord Astrologer. Audrey thanked him hurriedly. She looked at the desolate mountains around her and pursed her lips tightly. She wanted to know who had done that she would never let that person go. The preparations that she had worked so hard for more than ten years had been destroyed just like that. No matter how good-tempered a person was, they would not be able to accept it. After the astrologer finished speaking, he raised the staff in his hand and waved it gently. Mysterious and unknown stars, the light that shuttles between the past and the future. Please give me guidance to illuminate the path that is lost. Light Elemental Platinum Tier Magic Time Reversal as the most knowledgeable mage in the kingdom, the astrologer had mastered all six types of magic earth, fire, water, wind, light, and darkness. That was one of the reasons other people respected him. As the platinum tier magic was activated, the sun dimmed and was gradually covered by shadows. A black sun covered the sky and made the world lose its light. Everything darkened, and time began to reverse rapidly. The collapsed trees straightened again the cracks disappeared, and the cracked mountains healed. A large number of monsters and human shadows began to appear in the sky they looked a little blurry. Time returned to the day when Watson fought against the Demonis bandits. After Watson snatched the Great Sin Mask, he cast the Platinum Tear Deep Sea Dragon's Breath spell. A huge black stream of water swept past and shattered the primordial Demonis projection. It left a pool of water on the ground that would not disappear. So powerful. Who was that person? He could cast such a terrifying spell. Is there such a powerful person at the border? The other mages and mercenaries spoke in awe. Audrey's expression turned a little fearful when she saw that. She could not see the person who had released the magic. She only saw that the person wore the great sin mask. His body was young and tender, as if he was only a child. She had wanted to kill that assassin, but she had given up on that thought. Even though she was a confident person, she would not dare to fight against a platinum tier mage. Of course, even though she could not see the spellcaster clearly, she could see the clothes that he wore it was the same as the information she had received. 
Black Moon Castle It seemed like Black Moon Castle had attacked first before she could provoke them. However, who was that mysterious Platinum Tear Mage? She did not know that Black Moon Castle had such a powerful person. Audrey, you seem to know something. The astrologer suddenly turned his head. Lord Astrologer, I am certain that Black Moon Castle did this. Please help me destroy them. That is very important to me. If you are willing to help, then I will pay any price for that. Audrey thought that the Demonist Church's revival was more important than anything else. Since the Black Moon Castle had destroyed that place, they must have taken away the Great Sin Mask. As she touched her face subconsciously, the killing intent in Audrey's eyes grew more assertive. Don't worry, I am now a little interested in Black Moon Castle. It's been many years since I've made a move, so I'll warm up properly this time. The astrologer's tone was calm. Then, with his voice, time no longer receded. The surrounding scenery returned to its original state. The cracks that had healed opened, and the trees collapsed again. The black shadow that covered the sun also disappeared everything was only an illusion. The only difference was that the ground where he stood had cracked open. Two giant palms rolled out from the ground, followed by a huge body that was dozens of meters tall, it had a bright gemstone in the middle and two massive drills in its hands. That was a rock giant that was summoned by magic. It dragged the astrologer upward and roared at the sky. The earth shook, and everyone around looked at it with respect. In Black Moon Castle's hall, Watson was accompanied by his guards when he met the manor owners who were there to report the news they were Jack, Morgan, Christine, and Norton. Young Master Watson, the people from the Mage Guild will arrive in a day. I heard that they are bringing the largest mercenary group in Monty Town with them, and they also have a big hotshot from the Royal City. What should we do? The person who spoke was Christine she was the first to notice the Mage Guild's action. Perhaps it was because of her trade, she knew many people in Monty Town and was well informed. At that moment, she was wearing the gold tear armor that Watson had fused last time. She did not look too panicked. If she had not seen Watson's strength, she might have panicked or simply cut off their connection with Black Moon Castle. However, she knew that Watson could cast Platinum Tear Magic. Young Master Watson, if you can't handle this, then perhaps you can ask the Border Count. If he is here, then the matter will be resolved quickly, Jack said. Morgan nodded and agreed as well. Yes, yes. Ask the border count? What did that have to do with the border count? Watson looked puzzled. He felt that the manor owners thought he had a good relationship with the border count, but he was only a dispensable pawn. Why would the count help him? Well, it was not the time to think about that. I know. If the mage guild is coming, then let them come. I have already prepared the means to deal with them. When they attacked the Demonis Bandit Gang, Watson's most significant gain was the magical beasts he had fused within the Misty Forest. Even if more than half of them had been killed, there were still more than a thousand Silver-Tier Magical Beasts and a few thousand Bronze-Tier ones left. If he were to fuse them, he could raise the Golden Flash to Platinum Tier. No matter the Mage Guild's strength, how could they possibly match a Platinum Tier Magical Beast? Chapter 130 the Platinum Dragon King. After he met the manor owners, Watson instructed them to stay in Black Moon Castle for the time being. If they were worried, they could bring the people in their manor and let their guards inform the other manors nearby. Then, Watson went straight to the farm outside Black Moon Castle. After the expansion, the farm had gotten much more extensive. It was not inferior to an ordinary manor in terms of size or comfort, Every magical beast had their own home. The Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck had the most luxurious homes. The two magical beasts lived like kings and princesses their homes were like palaces. Golden Flash's palace was at least 10 meters high. It had a lot of furniture, and there was also a flower bed and grass field outside, which was convenient for the magical beasts to roll. There was also a massive fountain in the middle of the flower bed. At that moment, the golden flash was lying on the grass field, 
it was enjoying the coolness brought by the water spray from the fountain. A few smaller two-winged ligers next to it were flapping their wings as fans, they were fanning it with a flattering expression. Emperor Cluck was also nearby, it raised its coxcomb and stood proudly in front of its palace entrance. Some magical beasts were moving some eggs into its palace, and some were combing its feathers. Those magical beasts included the two-winged ligers, as well as the magical beasts that Watson had brought back after the fusion at the Misty Forest two days ago many of those were silver-tier beasts. The magical beasts in Black Moon Castle's farm were divided into two major factions. One of them was the Golden Flash faction, which was mainly composed of large magical beasts such as the Ligers or the Ice Monstrous Bear. The other was Emperor Cluck's faction, which was primarily made up of flying magical beasts such as the Storm Eagles. Even though they had only joined that big family for a day, the magical beasts had already recognized the farm's real boss. As Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck enjoyed themselves, they would glance at each other occasionally. Their gazes would meet in midair and sparks to fly. What a harmonious scene! Watson stood outside the farm and watched for a while before he walked into it. Even though many of the magical beasts in the farm were primitive beasts from the misty forest, and they retained their savage nature, as long as the Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck were around, those wild magical beasts would not dare to attack anyone. Watson was a little reluctant to fuse all those magical beasts. Perhaps it was because he was still too young, Watson felt a little sentimental, but he immediately dismissed that thought. The safety of his family was the most important thing. As if they heard his voice, Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck immediately turned their heads. Their eyes lit up as they rushed toward Watson. The two gold-tier magical beasts' posture sent all the other magical beasts nearby flying. Golden Flash was faster. In an instant, he had arrived in front of Watson. He climbed up onto Watson's shoulder along his calf and beamed proudly at Emperor Cluck, who was a step too late. Emperor Cluck raised its crest and stared at it arrogantly. It slowed down in front of Watson. It deliberately turned its head and used its colorful wings to touch Watson's feet. Watson sighed when he saw the two magical beasts' endearing nature, and he bent down and held Emperor Cluck in his arms. He stroked its feathers gently. Emperor Cluck had contributed a lot to that family. Black Moon Castle would not have such progression without Emperor Cluck's hard work. It was the same with the Golden Flash. It might have joined the family later, but it had protected them multiple times. Those two magical beasts were not only Watson's pets, but they were also his family. It was time to repay them. Golden Flash, Emperor Cluck, it's so good to have you by my side. In the future, I will definitely find more companions for you. But now, the family is in danger, and I need your help, so. As if it understood Watson's words, Golden Flash rubbed its fluffy head against him, indicating that he did not need to worry. Emperor Cluck also spread his wings and pecked his chest with his beak. A numbing sensation spread along his chest. Thank you. After he thanked them in his heart again, Watson closed his eyes, hugged the two magical beasts happily, and placed them on the ground. He turned his head to look at the thousands of magical beasts around him who were bowing respectfully to him and said, Thank you too. Even though he had the fusion system, he did not take it for granted respecting life was true power. The more he used the system, the more he felt that way. System fusion, activate. Watson closed his eyes and stretched his hand. The surrounding magical beasts immediately turned into streaks of light that entangled the Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck. Watson fused all the large magical beasts with the Golden Flash. The remaining airborne magical beasts were given to Emperor Cluck. The number was about four to one, the number of large magical beasts was slightly more. Within the light, Golden Flash and Emperor Cluck let out loud and clear cries. Their voices reverberated throughout the entire Black Moon Castle, and their bodies also grew larger. That transformation continued for a few minutes before the light dissipated. Two completely different magical beasts appeared in front of Watson. First was the Golden Flash. Its originally huge golden body had turned platinum, 
and his soft fur had turned into shiny silver scales. His initial lion, tiger, and goat heads had fused into a dragon head covered in scales with two horns, its eyes were golden, and its pupils were vertical slits. The twelve golden wings on the back of the golden shimmer had also disappeared, it turned into even bigger and broader wings. Congratulations, Master, for successfully fusing a magical beast. The gold-tier magical beast, the three-headed chimera, has broken through the bloodline limit and evolved into a platinum dragon king. The dragon race was one of the most powerful magical beasts in the world. As an ancient magical beast, the gold-tier chimera was already at its peak another advancement was an evolution. At that moment, the golden flash had successfully evolved in front of Watson's eyes. Platinum-tier magical beast the Platinum Dragon King Attributes, Fire, Earth, Dark, Light Abilities, Gold-tier Fire Elemental Magic, Sun Ray, Raging Flame Storm, Gold-tier Earth Elemental Magic, War Stomp, Earth Pulse, Gold-tier Dark Elemental Magic, Death Curse, Darkness Corrosion, and Lethal Poison. Platinum-tier Light Elemental Spells, Nine-layered Blazing Dragon Breath, Release Blazing Light Elemental Dragon Breath, Causing Large-Scale Damage, Platinum-tier Fusion Spells, Absolute Zero, Breath that combines Fire, Earth, Darkness, and Light. After release, it can cause enemies, including Space, to freeze, dot. Additional Abilities, Magic Immunity, 100% Immunity to Damages from Spells Below Platinum Tier, Physical Resistance, 100% Immunity to Physical Damage from Spells Below Platinum Tier, Abnormal Status Resistance, Resistance to Any Abnormalities, Draconic Magic, Spells that Dragons Can Learn Specifically, Currently Not Available, Scaling, Camouflage, Draconic Might, Awe Effect on Non-Dragon Creatures, Dot. As he looked at the long list of attributes in front of him, Watson's mouth was wide open, he could not speak as the list was too impressive. It was really too powerful. Golden Flash had been a golden chimera. It was a magical beast with fire, earth, and dark attributes. Then, it had gotten the light attribute, and it managed to retain all of its golden chimera abilities. It also had two platinum tier spells, and its additional abilities include increased abnormal resistance, draconic magic, and draconic might. Its strength had increased exponentially. Watson did not sacrifice those magical beasts in vain, he had upgraded the golden flash. Watson sighed. It was no wonder people said that the dragon race was the most powerful race in the world. The Holy Dragon Kingdom was so powerful because it had a rare and extremely elite army of dragon knights. If one wanted to become a dragon knight, one needed the recognition of a dragon. Dragons were usually proud creatures, and the lifespan of humans was too short dragons saw them as insects, and they took fancy to very few things. Watson heard there were less than ten dragon knights in the kingdom. However, from that day onward, Black Moon Castle had their own dragon, and Watson had officially become a dragon knight. 